everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. We are back here for day two of photo compositing. My name is Anna McNaught, and today I am hosting Holly Rose Stones. Welcome, Holly. How are you today? Hello, hello. Nice to be back. Yeah, I'm really yes. good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great, and I am excited to be hosting you again um, today or yesterday. We had a lot of fun working on some beautiful color edits, and today I think maybe your shirt is a little hint to what we might be doing, and <laughs> it's one of my favorite colors, so you know I am super stoked for that. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes. Um, so just want to give a warm welcome to everyone watching us today and welcome everyone into the chat. Hello, Robert and Fairy, Oliver, Sam. Nice to see you all here with us. Um, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to our new YouTube channel for Adobe Live, you can do that to stay up to date with the latest streams and participate in the Adobe Live community. Lots of fun things happening over there. And uh, just a quick reminder, don't miss our set of creative challenges right before this stream. You can tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt every day. Really good to always just kind of brush up on those skills and continue to improve the craft that you're working on. So without further ado, we will just jump over to you, Holly, and uh, and check out maybe a little recap of what we did yesterday yes. and, uh, and see what we got going on. Yes. So yesterday we were working through the blue project um and for those that weren't joined yesterday i'll just go back to here so i do a color project i've done green and yellow and i've also done pink but we're going to probably look at doing part two of pink hence why i'm wearing the pink shirt today <laughs> um and but yeah so the blue project is what we focused on mainly yesterday and i sort of revealed my new prop for it which was the phone um and we just Talk, well I talked through obviously compositing the images together um this was kind of like the rough edit before I would go in and do like a really really detailed edit but I just wanted to get it all together in one piece so we could see what kind of it'll look like at the end um so yeah today I think what I'm going to do is do a little bit of shading obviously where my chin's sitting on the top of the phone there and the back of the phone needs a bit of shading um, a bit of shadow in um and then I'm going to take it into Lightroom and I will edit how I would at the end of it, obviously compositing an image. And then it will not look exactly like this at the end, obviously, because I'll be then going into really refine it. But I just wanted to show you all that my way of, I suppose, adding presets and color grading and everything like that. So that's what we'll do today. Um, so the first thing that I'll do for now is the shadowing. So this is how I would really, I suppose, focus on creating a bit more depth to the image, because obviously this is not a super realistic image, but I want to create a bit more depth just to create like, as though it could be realistic. Um, that's kind of the, what I have in the back of my head every time I'm editing. So I'll add a layer. So I'm just gonna group all these layers together here. So this is kind of the background. Um, so I'm just going to make that into a group. And then I'll add a new layer. And what I'll do is I usually pick up a color just like near, if I zoom in a little bit, pick up a color around here, which is quite dark, but I want to go obviously for a little, a little bit of a blue. Um, so I'm going to pick that one um, and then we'll zoom out a little bit. So we've got it in full screen. And then I will just paste in a little bit behind the phone um, and not I'm not worrying about the chin yet because I'm going to sort of take that away in a little bit in fact then I will use a blend mode and I usually like to just flick through this like we did yesterday just to see what would what it would look like with each blend mode and then I can pick one that's going to be like the most well, I suppose the darkest one so I'm going to go for a probably linear burn and then I'm just going to turn the opacity down and then I will add a layer mask and just take away where I've just overdrawn obviously under my chin 
And so the light is obviously coming from this direction here. So I want to make sure that there's probably a little bit more shadow on this side. So if I just take away a little bit more of that. And the, it, the light is really high up. I think you can probably see it in my eyes there. So we'll go a little bit darker underneath. It's kind of mim mimicking this shadow as well um, over here. So I just mm. kind of look around for the shadows that are already in the image and then I can sort of mimic that. Um, oh, that one's... So when I, again, refine all this, I will add probably a little bit more shadow and to the actual telephone, which I might do in a minute, actually, but I'm very eager to get onto the Fink project. So <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm and I know we've only got a couple of hours, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll, that's added. Obviously, that's before and after. It just feels like it gels a bit more together. Um, so then we'll go on to the telephone, actually, and I'm just going to add a bit more. So I'll just create a clipping mask um, onto this layer, onto the telephone, so that when I paste uh, paint on top, it just, obviously you can see that it just goes onto the telephone layer. So I'll actually just do, and then I'm gonna go onto linear burn or else, actually, yeah, we'll go linear burn and then turn the opacity down a little bit. And then I'm going to use another layer mask and just take that out a little bit. That adds, again, a little bit more depth and gels it together. So, um, and then I probably would go in with a bit of a highlight. So I'm gonna highlight just this side of the image. In fact, what I'll do is I'll highlight the telephone first and then I'm going to highlight on top. So I'll get a new layer and then create another clipping mask. Um, and then what I tend to do is, um, I will, actually what I'll do is I'm just going to click on brightness and pop it up a little bit, create a clipping mask onto the telephone so you can see where the mask is just highlighted to that area and then I will probably invert the layer so command and I if you're on a Mac and then use the white just to bring it back a little bit um Mervyn so, wants to know if you're going to do anything with the eyebrows I know we played around with that a little bit yesterday yes I think I might leave them but I'm not too sure yet because we did pay I know we played around with it but I'm not sure if it looked right so we'll see maybe I think I was having a look at this today actually and I think the blue make eye makeup might need to be toned down a little bit but that was just my thoughts as I was looking throughout throughout the day so I'm not sure if I will tone that down so I'm not sure if the eyebrows will look good in blue so we'll see yeah see how we get on um so I will just take those layers off so you can see so that's what it would look like before and um, for the shading and then that's sort of after it just sort of creates that little bit of depth again and then I'm just going to go in with a bit of shading underneath my chin so this is more difficult because you've got to know where your layers are so obviously I've taken away I've put added the telephone on top but then taking away the telephone to reveal my chin so what I'm going to do is going to create a clipping mask for the telephone um, and add in, I think what I'll do is I'll paint it in. So add a new layer um, and then use the blue to just add a bit of shade in there. And again, another blend mode. We love a blend mode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to, when it comes to shading underneath, I suppose like, something that's not got shading at all underneath it. I like to add loads of different layers so then I can play around with um, to adding and taking away. So I'll just start with a little bit of shading first and add a, cliff, a layer mask and take 
that away. And then I'm gonna add another one, but on top of that layer. And I'm going to zoom in. So here, this um, edge needs refining again, but we're just focusing on the shading for now. So. So I'm imagining at the moment, my head actually resting on a phone. So I always think, how would the shadow fall onto the phone? So it would be quite dark at this point. So yes, shadows are there. really always the kicker of the image. Yes, especially when it comes to compositing, because you want to make sure that they, they look yes. realistic. Yes. Even though this is not a realistic, image I suppose it's just yeah it's like how, you still I, how wanna, I think about it yep you still want it to be real even though it's yeah. not real so. and then I'm going to add another one another layer in between those two shading areas And then I will, it's going to be quite dark over here. So probably many a burn again. <laughs> <laughs> zoom out. So this area. So this is what I mean by adding layers on top of each other when it comes to the shading. So you're not adding, you're not focusing on one layer just so that I can take them away and see where I need to add or take away. <laughs> Clever said, talk about a call out of the blue. <laughs> ah, I love that. That's a great that's so name good. for this. I know that's like a really, really great that's, title for it. Who who is that? I love that. <laughs> and and ringing in the ears, <laughs> ringing in the ears. Love it. I love that call out of the blue. Clever oh, Devlin, thank you yeah, for that. Is, yeah, that is a great recommendation. I love that. See, this is where I think, like, when it comes to adding in, or well, when it comes to like the concept coming after, sometimes you just don't know obviously the concept before and the meaning of it behind it. But I think after then you can think about it. So yeah. It. And maybe I had that in my head when I was thinking of blue and telephone subconsciously. I know. So we've added in, this probably needs a little bit more work in, in, under my chin. So, but I think for now, I'm just gonna show you what I've done there with the layers. So you can see the before of the underneath the chin and after. So it looks a little bit more realistic. Um, but I'm I'm eager to get this into Photoshop, so, uh, into Lightroom. So I'm gonna save that. And I'll bring it up into quite a heavy file so there we go so I'm just gonna wait to see if it loads because I've actually in fact I'm just gonna delete that from here remove from Lightroom and then I'm going to add it back in it should be quicker uh, blue project Just bear with import. Okay. When it's ready. And do you always uh, bring everything over to Lightroom after you're finished with it in Photoshop? Yeah. So as soon as I've, I know that I've got everything where I want it, I will then, and, and that's, that's in terms of like cleaning up the background, doing all the shading, um, really almost, almost finished. Um, I'll always bring it into Lightroom and then I'll add my presets. So mm. if I go into develop, so I've got my color project presets here and I have three, I basically work from three different presets. I'm not sure 
why this has happened but I just over over the years of editing I always have three different ones so that I can either merge them all together in Photoshop which I'm going to do and I'll show you in a minute or I can pick one that I like the best um just so that I know I've got and what I'll do as well is I'll put this on each so the color obviously I've got the color project presets so each project then has a uniform preset mm. um yeah I so. love that and I like them to go almost a bit too wild. So as you can see, this has gone really blue or really lighter blue. So I like to um, export that one. Let's find, oops, uh, blue project. Export that one. And then I will add the next preset which is color two. So that's a little bit more uh, mute, well not muted, a bit darker, a bit more, the, sh the, the shadows have gone a bit more, um, I suppose the blacks have been brought up a little bit in that one. So export with previous. And then I've got color three, which then here, it looks like a very like sharp, sharp and a different kind of blue. Mm. so I go export with previous and then I will use unique names did I export the first one I'm not sure actually did I let's just do that one again So then I will go to bridge. There's the pink project. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. <laughs> and then I'll pick up each one. I don't think I exported one. I think it was the middle one, maybe. Or it might be number one. It's a little bit slow today. There we go. And then I'll bring them back into Photoshop. So I'll select them in here. So you can see the different colors that I've got. What we'll do is I'll just use these two for now. So I'll go into Photoshop and then I'll keep the Photoshop file there. And I tend to just drag Oh, here we go. Are they the same? Yeah. So I'll drag. Uh, Fairy wants to know if you usually make your photos look more neutral first before you combine them all together. Uh, how do you mean neutral? Uh, so do you mean the saturation? I, I or... think so, yeah. Yeah, so what I do is I'll show you because I feel like just so I'll put these to the top layer so I tend to just like flick through let's just show you the before oops I think my clipping masks just disappeared on there there we go so I tend to just flick through the presets just to see because I don't want to veer too much from the color that I've created in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, and I can edit this, You can, obviously you can do this in Lightroom, but I really like having the control of all the color toning in Photoshop. So that's why I always bring it back into Lightroom, uh, into Photoshop and then I can play around with the colors there. Okay. So that I can always, so it, once I've got my edit um, on top, I can just toggle between before and after. So I can see there that it's a it is way it's a little bit more muted now than the color blue there. But what I'll do with these layers, so obviously I usually work with three. I don't know where it's is that the final one. Okay, Fairy said tell. he was he was asking specifically about white balance. White balance. Um I tend to I guess so. Uh, yeah, if it was ranging tone. like warmer or cooler. Yeah. So what? Yeah, I think I tend to 
like I said, toggle between the before and after so that the white balance is almost like, well, by eye, I can decide that when I'm editing this, obviously the, the, the color in Photoshop. Right. Yeah. So you can see there where my skin has gone. I mean, at this point, I would usually retouch my skin a little bit more, but I've not had time to, to do that. So I will, I think with the white balance, we'll play around with it. Cool. So I like that one, but I'm going to just turn the opacity down a little bit. So it brings back the original image. And then I tend to just do the same on other layers until I've got like a nice balanced color. Um, so it's a little bit less dramatic. And then I'll just turn the opacity down on the whole group until I'm happy. And then I'll build on top of that. So I usually go with levels first and bring up the brightness of the image using this toggle here. And then a little bit of the, on the other side, which is the shadows. And again, I'll group that together again. I'm just gonna write preset. So you can see that adds the, makes it a bit brighter. And then I usually go into color balance and go straight to shadows and we'll play around. Because we're dealing with blue, I want to put, well, re add more cyan and blue to the image. So that makes it a bit more richer. Yeah. And then I, sometimes I work in the same color balance um, layer, but then I, often quite like to add a new one so that again, I can just take away as I'm adding. Uh, oops. Highlights, then I go straight to highlights and I quite like a, a warm highlight. Um, so I add in a bit of yellow and then a bit of red and then a little bit of green or play between the magenta and green. So you can see that's what's mm. added there. And then again, I usually go in and just go before and after until I'm happy with the final preset. Um, so I'll go again with the color balance and I'm gonna go mid tones this time and just put in a bit of pink and then a little bit of blue. And a little bit much with that, but that's sort of color balance. But again, I would usually retouch my face, so it'd, it'd be a lot smoother in terms of color. Yeah. At the moment, it's quite harsh on my face. Again, yeah, so I would just toggle between the two. But I'm actually quite liking that. And then sometimes I, depending on how harsh the preset is at this point, kind of just turn the opacity down a little bit. But my process is just to keep adding, 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 and then seeing where it where I'm sitting with the preset and then I can take away or. Yeah, that's cool how you do it that way. I've never really seen yeah. someone do their uh, color adjustments like that. I'm not sure if I have, which is why I've always been like, I don't, I, like I've never seen anyone do it this way, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really cool because it gives like kind of a, a different, richer look. Yeah, and that's obviously with the colors and this, the color project, I feel like I really need rich colors. So sometimes with a preset in Lightroom, I find that I don't, I don't have enough control over it. So I like to add layers on top. And I think before I ever use Lightroom, I always use Photoshop like this, so. Yeah. So yeah, I think. I'm happy with those colors for the moment, but obviously Yay. bear in mind, this is where I would be retouching and I've got a lot of shadows to work on and, but I suppose this is the end of the blue project for now. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Just wow. going to save that one. It looks really awesome. But yeah, I've got obviously where the cord meets the phone. I need to shade there and there's a lot of touching up that I need to do on this, but I really would like to get onto the pink project. So should we do yeah. it? <laughs> Let's do it. I'm okay. super excited. 
So I'm just going to close that down for now. Um, and we'll go into the Pink Project Part 2. Yes. Um, so I went through these earlier and I picked some um, using star rating, five star the images that I want. And then I select usually with the red, which is, I think, command six on a, a bridge, just to pick a base image. So I've decided with these images. So this idea kind of came from, I already shot the Pink Project part one, which will be out soon. And in that image, um, I used a bright pink door and loads of letters everywhere. And again, like with my color project, like I said yesterday, I feel like I'm not done with just one image. So I felt like I needed to do another. Um, and I imagined myself with the, the letters coming from the door, I imagined myself in the letters. So I just felt like a big explosion would work for it. Um, so I basically got a big backdrop, stuck my head through the hole and just pasted on some letters. But I also wanted the letters to be exploding from the image. So we went and shot um, some like composite images. But I, again, when we, when we were shooting the blue project, I liked the arm. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just going to play around with the arm again and see. But we shot um, without the arm first. And then at the end, I was like, actually, let me just stick my arm through and see what that will look like. But yeah, so I've got images here that I basically threw the letters in the air and we captured, um, you can see my arm there. So we just threw loads of letters all around. And then my idea is to composite these letters on top of the base image so that it looks like they're exploding. Um, but yeah, so we'll start with the base image. Um, which actually I noticed when I was going through these that this bottom um, letter was cut off, um, mm -hmm. but then actually on the others, it wasn't. So I was gonna pick an arm Im image first and then composite my head from the other image into the middle, um, just so that I didn't have to then fix this bottom bit in Photoshop. It's just a lot easier to do it that way for me anyway. So I was gonna pick an arm. So the arm is a bit of an experiment, which I think we'll try today, but we may we may cut out at some point. Cool. So actually I might start with one of these images. Let's go with a, a base. So I like that one because that one's have has a really nice shadow behind it. So if we open this up to Photoshop. And again, like I said yesterday, with the um the size of my images, I always, and the orientation, I always go um, four by five, but then with the portrait image, I like to just play around with it. It just gives me a bit of freedom. So this one, I think I'm actually gonna do landscape because I feel like it will work like that. Um, otherwise I might change it to square, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna open that one up. Um, so the first thing, that I was just instantly wanted to do then was to change it to square. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just because I'm not used to really working with landscape, but I feel like I'm going to challenge myself today and do it in landscape. I know. I don't ever work with landscape either. No. And once I start working on it, I'm like, I feel weird. <laughs> yeah, it just felt really strange and I was ready to go to the crawl. <laughs> um, so I'll open up actually the other images on top and then see. So the first composite image I'm going to use. I think I quite like this image of me because my hair is flowing a little bit more. And I feel like with it being like an expo explosion, I feel like it's a bit more movement. So we'll open that one up. So what I will do is I'll pick up the lasso tool and I am actually going to just go around like this, just so I've got a bit of space to composite if I need to and lay a mask out or in. Uh, so copy and paste in place. We'll see if that actually goes in place. Oh, it does a little bit. So I'm going to turn the opacity down and just put this in. 
So I can see where, when we've been shooting, the backdrop was moving a little bit. So obviously that's where it's not quite lining up. Mm. But it's okay, we can fix that. Yeah, it's gonna... definitely pretty close, but... Resize, yeah. Resize that a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to erase all these letters around it, but I just like to get it in its position first and then we don't have to worry about it later. Almost there. I think the perspective was slightly off as well, so let's just move around a bit. There we go. So we'll turn that back up. And we're like that. So I'm actually gonna put a layer mask on there and just erase round my head. In fact, some ways I do this is I'll erase my head first and then I invert the layer so that I know that I've got everything. Mm find that quite a useful way of doing it. Yeah, that's much better. And then you don't miss any uh, areas on the on the layer mask. So. I'm going to zoom in and just toggle on and off just to see where that one has needs to move down a little bit. So just so this, I'm just pressing command and just changing the perspective a little bit, just so we can match it up. Uh, Fairy wants to know if you use a remote um, or a Sony Imaging Edge to trigger your camera. Yes. So usually if I'm working on my own, I will use Sony Imaging Edge um, and I have it on a laptop. Um, but with this image, because I was behind and obviously poking my head through, there was no way that I could physically press unless the laptop was literally behind the backdrop. So I asked Jack to help me on this one, but usually I'll have the laptop. I think I did on this one. I had the laptop set up so I can see what I need to do and then when the image comes up and pops up from the camera I can then change change how I need to move my head or sort of like a preview and then I can see where I need to move from there mm, um, okay. but I love Sony Imaging Edge it's like the best I used to when I did self-portraits on my Nikon way back in the day um I used to have a the iPhone app but you couldn't change any of the settings on there so it was really hard, so I'd have to go behind the camera, set the settings up, and then press, literally take the picture, and then have to go back and forth if I need to change it anyway. Um, but with Image in Edge, you've got all the all the settings there, and I quite like yeah. using like the burst mode, so you can change everything. It's just so good. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so you can create a time lapse or you know anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of lacking right now. I think um, when we are taking, when we set it up on the tripod and then trigger it to shoot for us, um, it won't do a burst. It will only do yes. one at a time. So we have to oh. keep clicking. Yeah, that's what, yeah, the Sony, the, yeah, it's just, it. you can do anything. You can, I think sometimes if I'm working on my own, I will do like a five image burst and then I can go back and forth, but yeah. with it coming up on the screen, you can use image and edge on your phone as well, uh, which I actually shot the, I'll show you this, this, this one was actually shot with window light. Um, it's just here actually. So I was shooting here mm. um, and I had my phone on me at that point. So just cause I had nowhere to put my laptop. Yeah. So yeah, it's so good. Yeah. I might have to look into switching to Sony. But I think with the Canon, you can put it on uh, like burst mode or continuous shooting. Yeah, I remember we looked There's into a way that doing, and yeah. it wasn't working for whatever reason, but oh, no. 
I don't know. I need to search it, <gasps> do some research on it again. Yeah. <laughs> Where am I with this? So I'm just going to add in. So at the moment, I'm just going round and adding and taking away where we've got letters overlapping. So I'll just quickly do that. Move before, after, and that's not too bad for now. So it's good for that bit actually. Okay, so what we'll do next is fit on screen. Right, we've got the base image then, and a little flyaway letter here which is good because it's already in the shot i don't need to composite it in but i will go and get some images to composite in now so i quite liked when i was looking through these earlier there's me <laughs> <laughs> um, i really liked the bunch of maybe that's a little bit too dark I quite like that one maybe I just have to flick through. So what I'll do usually is just flick through them really quickly. And then if one sticks out, which that one actually does, I'll open it up. And... I like to just use that half of the image. So I'll copy and paste that on top. And so that's added it in as a new layer and it's obviously over the top. So I'll just use a layer mask again. And again, I will usually paste out the bit I want first and then invert. And that looks cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's super sweet. Love that. So if we just notice a little bit of overlap in there. Cool. Okay. So I'm aware we've got like the end of the backdrop here and some bits up here. So I might just edit those first so that I feel like we've got a bit more of a complete image and then I will go in and add in some more letters. So we'll just do the content aware for them. Like we did yesterday. Yeah. Favorite. <laughs> <laughs> press OK and then as easy as that love it OK and then I will go with the patch tool so this is the clips for the top of the hmm. I'm just going to go around that and just get rid of those and then yeah I like to just get rid of some if I ever see anything whilst I'm editing quickly I'll just get rid of it and then Again, like I said yesterday, I will go in and refine it. So, yeah, I feel like that's definitely the best way to work because, as we talked about yesterday, then yeah. then you're not wasting time on areas of your image that you decide to end up changing later. Change on. it, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly that. So yeah. I think I think we're yeah. Yeah, because you can spend all the time cleaning up this backdrop and I might change it to square. So it would have been time wasted doing that. Yeah. That's why the cleanup always happen happens at the end. Okay. I think I'm a little bit off centre here, but I think when I get the letters on this side, I'll have a look where we are at that point and then change it. Maybe move it over a little bit. So I'm going to just have a look. Oh, there's Jack again. <laughs> it was funny i was like see if you can actually reach out of the holes we've made and he's like his little fingers yeah he's like that's all i can get yeah <laughs> okay oh yeah the arms i actually was thinking of bringing the arms in so i'll just pick an arm on the left i kind of wanted one arm a bit higher and then one arm going down you know just to make it a bit different on both sides, so I think we'll pick. There was one 
I like that one. Or maybe, hmm, we'll see, we'll pick this one for now. And as well, when I'm editing composites, I never change the perspective of this part until the very end again, because when you composite in and in, you want it all to match up. And if I change the perspective of this now, or, you know, move that over a little bit, it would be really hard to like line everything up again. So that's why I do all this first and then I'll change it at the end. Mm. So I'm gonna paste that in place. So it almost matches up at this point. Hmm. Okay. That looks quite eerie. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so it's so weird to have it like your arm Just coming out so far. There, away. Yeah. <laughs> I think this this is why I thought it would look good as the landscape because it's so like wide, and then you've got the randoms random arms. Yeah. I kind of like to go a bit, yeah, a little bit like playful and, but like disjointed with mm -hmm. the way that I edit. Yeah. So that is a little bit lighter, but I think that's because potentially when we were shooting, I might've changed the settings a little bit. So what I'll do is click on the layer um, and just go image adjustments brightness and contrast and just bring that down a little bit so it just matches that's pretty much there there we go and we'll get the layer mask again and again I'm going to erase the arm and the shadows to a point and then invert so I'll have to work with this one. Try and match it up a little bit. So do you think you would leave this landscape then because you're putting the arm so far over there? Or? I think now I can feel it's gonna be landscape. Yeah. And yeah. then what do you do when you're gonna post that on Instagram? Do you just post it? I landscape? don't know. <laughs> I know. That's always <laughs> my question for everyone. I'm like, if you make landscape, what do you do with it? <laughs> well, I maybe I would post it as a square and then have it with like the white frame around it or something just to mm. like add in. Um, but I have really thought about that at this, the moment. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's why I kind of have always shot with four by five or like yeah. because of Same. Instagram feed. Um, and it's really pleasing when you've got it and it fits in the box it's all nice but I think with this again like I said earlier I wanted wanted to challenge myself just to see if we could do a landscape plus I can imagine this more in a gallery space yeah. like we were saying yesterday so I feel like that would fit yeah really I think that would be huge, cool huge on a, a massive wall I can imagine this and like maybe some yeah. interactiveness like the the, the letters flying out. Ah, oh, so cool. Yeah, that would be cool to even make it like 3D in a gallery. Yeah, that would be, I'd love that. Oh. I'm manifesting it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go in and just take out. Add that folder back in. We move that over a little bit there. I'm gonna take away a bit of that shadow just to blend it all together. Okay, how are we looking? Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Oh, yeah. there, just at the at the bottom, I think we need to just take away. Oh, I might add that back in and just create that 
square bit there. Move it a little bit. Okay. That's looking good. Yeah, that looks so cool. I love that. I'm going to try now to add in the other arm. We'll see if it looks how it looks. <laughs> I kind of really wanted it to be a bit higher, so. Maybe that one, or that one. I'm, I'm stuck between that one and that one. Hmm. Let me see the other one again. I think this, that. That no, one, that one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think my finger looks yeah. a little bit better on that one. Definitely. So open that one up. And I will need to probably edit the background on this one because where I put my arm through the backdrop, it's sort of crinkled the backdrop a little bit. So this one might require a little bit more compositing. More layer masking. Although that lines up very well. So we'll go into I'm going to pop that one below this letter here. I think it's that one because I want it to, that what that layer obviously to be at the top. And then adjust the brightness again because we must have shot it a little bit lighter. And I will add a layer mask. I wonder how many times I say layer mask. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> layer mask. Layer mask. Layer <laughs> mask. <laughs> I know it's so funny. Like all of the Photoshop terminology that we just repeat over and over when yeah. we do lessons. <laughs> I think I've once had a dream where I was just saying the words over and over again or the oh yeah lasso tool patch tool yep i definitely have dreamt about photoshop before yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then like when it's just going wrong i'm like oh i can't do anything about it in my dream <laughs> i know oh my god or like losing files in your sleep yes. which by the way have you saved this oh yes no i haven't <laughs> <laughs> here we go Yes, got to make sure. Fairy, yes. why weren't you helping us out here? Yeah. <laughs> I think, how long did it take last time? Probably like maybe similar time. Yeah, I think we and got we're like it almost an hour soon. in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll just get rid of this little bit here. And I might move it over a little bit and add corner back in. Okay, I might just adjust the brightness again, bring it up a little bit. That feels a bit better. So I've just spotted we've got a bit of a lighter patch under here. Yeah, Fairy said, always use layer mask, never eraser tool. I remember when I used um, to do that. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did that for a long time. Isn't it weird to think that there was a time when like we didn't, didn't understand exist, did layer mask? Yeah. I, I don't know. I I wonder if they've always existed, but I remember I just, I couldn't wrap my head around the concept of a layer yeah. mask. It was like- I remember, <laughs> yeah, I re always remember like doing, like which one was which, black and white, which way around, and then I'd be, I, I couldn't understand it for a long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I know, same, it's really funny. So 
So, how's that looking? That looks really cool. I quite like it. I will need to just clear, clean it around here and there on that side as well. But I think what we'll do is, again, like I worked out yesterday and I always put everything in first and then we'll clear up after. So we'll need some letters for this side. Um, I quite like those. And I always love when I'm compositing, especially when I'm trying to make like even an explosion or something that looks like it's coming off the page is always have the object sort of out of frame a little bit. So it looks like there's yes. more happening. Yes. So I can see there that these ones here, I've got the shadow here. So I'm going to select around all of this because then that saves me adding in any shadows later. Oh, well, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm not sure if I like these two, so I might just lay a mask that out. And keep this one, because I like this one. My aim at the end what I'm thinking right now is that I've got obviously quite dark corners and that's going to be when I edit it, like we did earlier with the blue project and the presets, I usually add gradients as well in, in Lightroom after. Mm. So what I'll do is after I've saved the image, um, so taken it from Photoshop into Lightroom, create the presets, add them on, bring them back. Then I do all my layers and the color adjustments in there. And then I take it back into Lightroom and add a lot of gradients at the, at the top and the bottom and just to clean up the edges because I think with this uh, color project I'll just go back to this I like them to be quite well either, here I've got a darker area and depends depends how I want the image to feel but I always add in a gradient at each side and that, that's just to lighten it up or darken it down but I can see here I'm going to be able to I'm going to have to add in some gradients yeah I feel like that will help kind of amp everything up yeah so we've got i'm going to move that player below that one oops and then i'm going to just erase that top bit because that's where the content aware fill was just because we've got a little bit of white showing there few more what I'll do is I'll just go have a look at that, all the images because we've got quite a few here yeah I feel like this could end up taking so long if I was just doing this on my own and not yeah. like for a live stream you know just delicately picking each envelope each, and yeah I can go back and forth for hours yeah and it ends up being like okay which one looks good and then yeah. you second guess everything that you're thinking that's <laughs> definitely what happened with the yellow project because with that I'll just go back again the placement for these took probably about five hours in total, just just the placement <laughs> before I'd even like wow. actually, com you know, composited it all out and cleaned it up. Yeah. It, so I was going back and forth on where I wanted it to go and where I wanted um, them to end. And 
cross over each other and curl a bit because I use the puppet warp on this one just to like make it a little bit more of a snaky look. Mm. Um, and then I was like, with this one here, I was moving it up, down, up, <laughs> down. <laughs> Hours. <laughs> oh my God, I know. I know how it goes. And at that point I was like, I need you to step away from this and just yeah. take some time. <laughs> <laughs> so, got this composite under here. This might cover that one. And I really like that one. So I'll have to, I think I like this really far corner one. So using my technique of erasing the area that I want and then invert the layer. And I already know at this point that the shadows here are too dark for what I want. So I think at the end or when it when I get to that point, I'll probably make them a little bit lighter. So they're not mm. as deep. Yeah. It's quite interesting to say what I'm doing out loud as well, because usually this all happens in my head on right. my own. <laughs> so it's quite interesting to see actually that's the decisions I'm making. So this is, this is good for me. Yeah. It's actually interesting how helpful it becomes because you start yeah. to kind of be like, oh, well, why am I doing this or how am I doing this? And yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. I really like those two, so I'm gonna add those ones in. And then at some point, I think where I've not managed to fill some gaps. So once I've got all these pasted in, so like this, obviously this is overlapping there. So I might actually move these ones to somewhere else, but not too far away. Cause if I brought them over here, the light and the Again, the direction of the light is coming from here, so I don't want to take them too far over that way. I mean, I can edit that, but I just like to make sure it's, you know, I've got some, I've got some letters for over here, so we're all good. Mm. Right, so. We'll lay a mask that out. Invert it again. Might bring it down just, oops. just to see what it's like down here. Maybe pop it on top of the arm. Hmm. That could be interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. Kind of like hides it in there. Yeah, I can probably cut that out and. See where that goes. So I, at this point, will use a polygonal lasso tool and just cut the this side of the layer out. And again, this is just for me to feel, to see what it would look like if I completely got rid of that. So this bit here will need. Because I might have to erase this part, not the letter, but just this part under here and then add some shadow back in. So let me see what this looks like first. Yeah, quite like it. I like that. I love okay. that. Yeah, I feel like that works. Maybe you need to just turn the brightness down a little bit on that layer this like really feels total valentine's day vibes oh yeah it does actually <laughs> i feel like oh, it's yeah. like let me be your valentine and it's like exploding letters <laughs> lots of love <laughs> <laughs> You'll definitely have to post this on Valentine's Day. Yeah. When is that? February. Might be uh, fe February yeah, February 14th. 
<laughs> do a I, think, I don't think post. I'll be able to wait. Yeah. Oh yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Or post a reel on it on that day. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've got all like the behind the scenes of these images as well. Um, and they'll probably be going on my YouTube or and Instagram and TikTok. Probably. Yes. Because as much as I love editing the images, I also really love doing behind the scenes videos um, because I just really like seeing, I personally love watching progress of an image and how it like starts from idea to execution, to Photoshop, to editing, to posting. Mm. I love watching that kind of thing. I know me too. Yeah. I saw a couple of yours and it's like, it's really cool how you do that. And I, I like, I, yeah, seeing the behind the scenes is just so much fun. I think it's because you, sometimes you, your mind can go to how is this actually done? And then you, you see like a behind the scenes or before and after and it's like, wow, that's so yeah. different to how I expected it to be. Yeah, it's like really satisfying for some yeah. reason. Yeah. So I think I'm going to bring that one down there a little bit. And I'm actually going to cut this one out completely. And we'll add in the shadows later. Okay, so command D. I learned that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Always learning something new. Yep. And that's command D to deselect. Yes. For everyone yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah, that's like super helpful. Anytime Photoshop's kind of acting wonky and you can't click on anything, usually some secret little selection that you can't see. Yes. And there we are closing Photoshop down <laughs> to, to reopen it. I know I have done that, that many fixed times. It. And I yeah. feel like that's what's so tough sometimes about learning a new program, because when I was trying to learn After Effects, there would be little things like that, that I never knew. Um, there could yes. be something that's selected that you don't know. But with Photoshop, that was one of those things that I learned early on and it helps so much. But if you're brand new to Photoshop, You'd be like, what is going on? Like yeah. I tried to, I try to teach my mom Photoshop and it just, it didn't. <laughs> where did you start? How did you she, start she, with it? <laughs> so she really wanted to be able to edit family photos and like, oh yeah, um, stamp stuff and like clean yes. it up. And I'm like, this is easy. These are the few things you can do. But then little things like that, if something was selected, she'd be like, why the whole program's not working. Yeah. And there was, yeah. Like, like I did yesterday, I blamed <laughs> something's going on, but it was just because it was selected. Yeah. I think the first thing that I would probably start if I, if I was teaching someone probably like patch tool and look or clone stamp. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I decided a few years ago to make a course called Photoshop for beginners. And I basically yeah. was like, oh, I'm going to take on teaching someone as if they've never opened Photoshop never, yes. before all the way through creating like composites and text and editing yeah. photos. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing though. That's so it cool. It was so hard. <laughs> I should probably go back and redo the whole thing now that I know Photoshop better, but yeah. And oh. a lot has changed probably as well. That's yeah. the thing with like, it changes so often now. I know that was before, I believe that was before content aware fill and before sky replacement. So it was, uh, oh, yeah. definitely a lot different. I don't think I've used sky replacement yet. I think I played around with it when it first came out and then just on random images, but then I've never really done it since, but I think it's because now I'm shooting in the studio mainly right it's really right. hard to because I used to shoot a lot in fact the majority of my like images and photos were outside on location but yeah 
yeah, sky replacement is the best. It's so, so easy to use and just can make like a really boring photo look incredible. <laughs> because you can you use any sky? Yeah, so you can either add the ones that are already in there from that are uh, set in Photoshop or you can import like your own photos or stock or anything yeah. you want. So it makes it really, really nice and simple. I love that. Kyle said, I'm way late on this, but you said lots of love and that makes sense because your arms are L's and your head is in a O. And oh my God, that's, I didn't even realize that it, and it almost looks like your other arm could be like the start a of a V. Yes. L O. <laughs> B, where's the E? I know. <laughs> Maybe I need to extend it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That's this cute. is so fun because I think, yeah, like the concept comes to life as I'm doing it. Yeah. You could sell and it here to Hallmark. Everyone... Yeah. <laughs> Be like, here's your Valentine's Day banner. Lots of love. <laughs> I can imagine this on a big like billboard or something. Yes, totally. Totally. That would be okay. so cool. Yeah. So I think this one's a little bit in the way there. Because uh, I really want my hair to be on show. So I might move that one. I think I might just store that one for a moment and come back to it. So I need some down. Where do I, where do I need some? Because I want to create it a real explosion. I might have to add in some real close to the camera depth of field ones around like here and we'll see. In fact, I might do that with one. So we'll get one. That one's quite nice, I like that one. In fact, I think we've got to use that one there. I'm gonna pick this one up. I don't need to copy it. I always end up with a million tabs at the top. I know, <laughs> me too. And then you go into the, it ends up drop down. <laughs> and I'm like 20 pictures later. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, story of my life. There we go. So I kind of want to create a big one. Add that in here. And I'm going to blur it so it looks like it, the depth of field obviously is mm. towards the camera. So with that, I just obviously the lasso tool around it and then you just press on the layer mask and it obviously gets rid of that. Oh yeah, that's cool. Move it a little bit, oops. I think I can add that bit back in. Let's see, so. Um, I tend to do a small object. Oops. Not a small object. I like a vector file actually, a rasterized layer. So then I go and do a filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And that already looks a lot more like a flyaway one. I think it's a little bit big though. So we might just take that down a bit.
And I might add a radial blur just to add a bit more movement to it. Yeah, that would be cool. Although, is that, is that doing anything? I think it won't actually give you a preview. Oh. To, yeah, and then that's probably going to go crazy. Let's see. Yeah, it will. <laughs> it's on 40. It's going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I usually set it for like around 5 to 10. Seven. A little bit too much, so we'll go. Yeah. Go three. Yeah, so that feels a bit more movement. But I think I'm going to just keep that there for now because I might move that out of the way over here or again it's just an experiment isn't it at this stage yeah right where do I need some more I think I need some around here this is where a space that's missing Maybe that one. Oops. Cut those ones out. I feel like I'm in full concentration mode now. <laughs> I know what? I'm getting like sucked into the edit too. I'm like, hmm. I quite like these two ones here. I just need to bring, oops. Click back on that layer. Uh, image, brightness and contrast and bring that down a little bit. And then again, layer mask. I'm going to take these ones out. And then invert that layer. And this might require a lot of masking around here. Just turn the brightness down again on that one. Oops, that's the blue from the blue project <laughs> creeping in. <laughs> creeping on over. So did you say that part one of the this pink project is already finished? Yeah, so that one's already shot. Um, just waiting on Brand to tell me if I can post it or not yet. So I can't really expose it yet. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's the it's very similar vibe to this. Okay, cool. Um, it's sort of, I mean, I could probably explain. It's, it's, it's a door and it's got coming out of the door all the letters. And again, it's coming towards me. So it is kind of an explosion yeah. as such. So that's why I was kind of again, interested in doing a really big explosion again, um, just with the portrait, but I just, I kind of wanted to do, like I said earlier about the experiment with the landscape, but yeah. this is, I think this is the project for me at the moment is just experimenting. Once I've got the main image, the image that I really I've focused on, I've done lots of props for, I just want to revisit it again and just see 
how I would totally. go about it again yeah and what I'd do different and it gives me that freedom to go again yeah it's really cool that you're doing two for each yeah I think that I never intended to do that but like I said with yesterday with the green um I saw I had this in, um, in my mind anyway and then I knew that there was going to be a little frame on the wall that was always going to be part of the image but I wanted to color it green because I was like everything needs to be green there's so it it sort of leaves the audience wondering why there's a green full green frame on the wall essentially right right and so when I had finished this I was like wouldn't it be nice to create like a different world through that frame and then that's why I kind of had the idea of like it'd be nice to show me putting the frame up on a wall kind of thing or holding it up um and then you've got this uh piece I suppose where I kind of like I had this perspex piece of but it's clear perspex and then I painted on it and again using a bit of paint in this one so I just that's wanted so it, it, it's yeah, so just, awesome. I love that idea of kind of like these little things inside of your pieces becoming a, the next image. A new, it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's like stepping into your world. It's almost like a little game. Like you're kind of yeah. looking for that hidden piece. And what would come next? So when I post yeah. the main image or like the main green project, pink project, blue project, like what's next? I suppose yeah. with the blue projects is a bit different because I've already got the prop. But then I know that I've got the prop, but I'm making it big. So that's kind of like the excitement of the next image is that what's this big prop slash phone is going to look like. I suppose I it is a little that. bit of a, a little bit of a world that I'm living in. Totally. And I'm like letting people in. Yeah. 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 Kyle like said with, a, ra a rabbit hole of creativity. I love yeah. that. And I might at some point go back and visit these ideas um or revisit the props or maybe even join them all together at some point mm. I don't know that could be an idea that would be really cool like a full so, rainbow rainbow <laughs> yeah um I was gonna say something oh yeah with this one I actually did a bit of a gif uh, let's see if I've got it on here um so I did a moving image for it uh, in fact probably best to show you the real So it actually uh, moved. That's cool. How did you do that? Is it a video inside the frame? Yeah. So I cut, um, I obviously got the shot of the frame and then I cut this out and created a PNG file. Nice. And then I had the video. So I did a little video as it was shot. Um, so, so I wanted them to match up obviously. So I wanted the same light and everything. So just basically turned my camera on video and videoed a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I wasn't intending on doing the GIF or the video, but I just sort of, I was like, oh, this would be quite nice to add it all together. So then I brought it into Final Cut Pro and just merged the two together. I love it. That is so, so awesome. And the little flowers on top, like what a great touch. Yeah. And I, I just had another vision. If, if this goes in a gallery space, it'd be quite nice to have like a a TV screen on the wall with this kind of next to. Yes. Yes, cool. totally. I think you have to start pitching. Some I know. Galleries. I you really, have a great I think, plan. yeah, <laughs> I think this has definitely helped me understand where I want to go with the gallery space. I think your input as well has been so helpful. Yes. That. Good. I'm glad. Well, we'll have to keep in touch after this. Yes, and, definitely. Uh, and talk all about it. Yes. hundred percent. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat said, although the colors are the same, it's very comfortable to the eye. Super creative. I know. I think that's what's really unique about your color work here is that even though every, all the colors are the same minus your skin tone, like it's, it's not boring or too monotonous. It's like really, really pleasing to the eye where normally oh we might be taught to add in like a complimentary color or different tones of that color. I yeah. just love that it's like one shade. Yeah, I like that that like idea of obviously me just being the the other color in the image. Yeah. I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, very cool. And I can that kind of brings in the like real human aspect of mm -hmm. these 
especially with the storyline of it being my world that I'm in. Yeah. I'm still here, but this is all going on around me. Yeah. And for you, like breaking out of kind of these uh, more muted color tones and embracing this bold, beautiful, bold. Yes. colorful world. Yeah. You're like the one thing that's like the, the consistent. natural, yeah. Yeah, consistent color. And then you have all these. Yeah. Really awesome. And actually I think um, after I did the pink or this pink project part one and this one I was like I actually might dye my hair pink but yes. then I was like <laughs> yeah and then we had the blue yesterday but I was like no I think for this project I want it to be consistent I have mm. obviously get I've gained a fringe in the meantime but <laughs> yes oh my god I think pink hair would be really sweet I'm actually thinking of dyeing mine purple in the next few ah, weeks. <laughs> I can see you in purple I really, really want to do it. And then I think for winter, I'll go back to brown. But I figured I need to match my art, right? (laughs) Yes, I would love that. I'd love to see that. Um, This is it. I feel like I'm matching my art all the time. Yes, (laughs) yes, exactly. Um, Kyle had a question a little bit back about um, how did you keep the shadow when masking in the last two envelopes? I think it was maybe the one? one above your arm. Yeah, maybe that one. Yeah. And was it the this this one here and this one? Yeah. Let me just see where that one is. Yeah, I think maybe that one. And let me just see where the other one is. Yeah, so this obviously is the shadow from the other image. Or the original image. Well, I've lost it again. So you can see here that I need to do a little bit of work on the shading underneath there. So from far away, it's not too noticeable. But again, when I go in and refine it, I'll probably add in a bit of shading there and just clean up this line a little bit. And this line here needs actually cleaning up too. But with the other one... You just kind Pretty of like much, yeah. masked it, masked with leaving, it, leaving the shadow. Yeah. Right. Okay. And sometimes I actually will tone down the shadow a little bit, depending on because that's quite a thick shadow, if that's the word thick, but might be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just kind of like blend it in. Yeah. So I try not to erase the actual one, the actual letter. Because, yeah, you can see the shadow there. That, to me, is too big. So I'm just going to take away that. So, the yeah, the shadow is on the original images that I'm taking. So, like, here we've got the shadow behind the letter there and then here and I just kind of try and keep those shadows in and then I can add some more later and this is why we throw a lot of letters and get a lot of images sometimes (laughs) sometimes we'll be shooting and obviously Jack's pressing the shutter and I'm just like keep going keep going going, going." (laughs) throw 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 yep (laughs) because I wanted um with this one in particular actually I think you can probably see at the start of me throwing. I wanted loads of letters together. So I was just throwing them and we were shooting them. And then I was like, actually, it'd be nice to get some individual letters. So I was just throwing one at a time. So you can see there. Mm. That's where it misfired, I think, the flash. So it's a little bit more difficult to when I used to shoot outdoors and on location, when I was shooting a lot of images, say if I was throwing the letters outside, I could shoot really big, fast bursts because obviously the light's consistent. But in the sh- in the studio with the flash, you can't shoot too much at once or else. I mean, with uh, my flash anyway, yeah. right. it's a it bit needs slower. To refresh. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes when obviously it misfires the flash, but we've got like quite a good routine with it now. So he'll press it at certain points. Or if I'm on my own, then I'll just press it on the laptop as I'm doing it. Yeah, Yeah, it seems like you got a lot in there. 
thing. Oops. I really, I quite like some over this side. So we'll go to before that because we cut the hole in there at the start have I got that one I don't know actually I think we need to go for a bit further down on the right hand side like that one and I, I'm quite conscious of the fact that we do it well I've I've purposefully placed the letters so you've got some with the envelope and then obviously some with just the blank so I was consciously throwing them the different ways so you could see the flap of the envelope and then the, the front of it yeah that's definitely smart so we'll put that on and keep it about I'm not sure at the moment if these two are a little bit too similar. But I think we'll composite this one in and have a look. So for the, the pink project part to, at one, this one's number two, I actually edited in stamps so on each letter they had like a little first class stamp ah oh, that's so cute so i might eventually do that but then that that is quite a it's a process of making sure that they're all the the, the right perspective and yeah but again i've got to wait until i'm allowed to post that one first and then I can probably edit them later so I'm liking this, but I feel like it's a little bit off. So there's something not right. Let me take the arms out for a second. Where's the other arm? In fact, I'm going to label that right arm. I can't find this arm. Where are you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> arm left. So I'll take arm left and right arm. I don't know if I prefer it. Or maybe just the one arm. I don't know. I really like both of them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Let us know in the chat what you all yeah. think. Yeah. Do you like two arms, one arm, and if one arm, which arm? Left, that's left, and then that one's right. As we're looking at it anyway. It I know now now, uh, now I'm like if I was seeing this for the first time, I might like that, but I've gotten used to the two arms. Yeah. I think it might be because this pink is slightly different to the letter pink. Mm. So I'll probably change that anyway. So it's more consistent with this color. All right, chat Let's has spoken. See. We got two oh. votes for both, one vote for three arms. <laughs> three, <laughs> can add another one in. Be like, woo, maybe you could add yeah. like eight arms. You're eight. like a yeah. octopus with letters. <laughs> in fact, what, I've probably got another arm somewhere. <laughs> from the side I know maybe we could get crazy with it I don't know where it's gone so many pictures oh I don't know now so people so everyone's saying both. both yeah right okay I think if we got if we're gonna have both we need a bit more movement down here maybe over this way 
So I think I might need to put in a little bit of a, a blurred out letter here, but we'll see. I'll open, open one up actually. It's so funny because when I edit, I always bite my nails a little bit. Don't not <laughs> bite them off, but I'm like. <laughs> I know. I feel like I definitely do that too. I'm always kind of like. Eh. Kyle said doing a gif of your arms going crazy would be awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be That's so a great cool. idea. Yeah. I just want to come back and edit my projects on here every time because <laughs> you're giving me some great ideas. I know. This is a great collaborative project now. I know. That would be one major pro to like going live on Behance, just like on your own page yes. and stuff. It's you could just be like, help. <laughs> yeah. I love that actually. Great idea. Yeah. Okay. Where am I going with this now? <laughs> You know what? We can actually, I just realized it's two o'clock. So oh. um, we can do uh, the artist spotlight if you feel oh, like yes. you're kind of at a good stopping point and then we'll go back yeah. over to yes. um, your project. Good. Yeah, I think I need to like not see it for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I to totally understand. I yeah. feel like it's perfect stopping point. So yeah, let's just hop over to that um, okay. and check out so. our person of the week. So my... Artist Spotlight is a very lovely artist called Emma Black. Um, she actually is mainly a painter. I think she works with oil, um, I believe. But she creates her, from what I've seen on her Instagram, she creates her pictures um, on Photoshop first, composites things together. So, which is where I kind of feel most comfortable, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and it really is pleasing to me that she'll composite and then shade and sh shading actually real life, I suppose, on the on the painting. Wow. Um, so I'll just zoom down. Let me just I have move to follow to her. Side. I absolutely love her work. So she's got quite like, I mean, when you instantly look at it, you just think that, I mean, the colors are just so rich and nice. I mean, that's very pleasing to me at the moment. But then when you kind of delve deeper in, You've got let me just find which one it's so crazy so these are paintings like they paintings. look so 3d so this is her emma um and i love the name goo goo gilly i know <laughs> really. it makes especially, me so happy <laughs> especially with the googly eyes in her yeah work. and that's like totally consistent throughout um there was one that i wanted to show you uh where is it this one so I see this as such a beautiful wow. portrait and everything's so rich in the colors and you've got like really nice nature elements but then you've also got like the heart here and mm. the intestines and, and they're like hidden behind the flowers and I just love the composition and the juxtaposition between them um, oh my god it's so good her work is and I, unreal so nice and she does i think these are mainly self portraits as well um so she'll take a picture of herself and then obviously composite the stock images or whatever she uses and then she'll paint from that there was a, a gift that i want uh, not give her real that i want to show you yeah i'd love to kind of see her process more so the finishing touches she sort of hang on yeah she adds this lovely shine on top and that is like adding a preset for me i'm like oh, i know you can just see it come to life i know oh my god so it's just so nice because you've got that like you can see that it's a bit more muted and then as soon as that goes on the rich black and i'm like oh, so pleasing yeah oh my god i've never seen anything that looks like this i'm just i'm totally blown away i'm like looking so at her nice. reels too on my phone and it's yeah Oh yeah, okay. So it's almost like she's compositing uh like the find. sketches or something first. Yeah, like so she, she might have yeah, she probably sketches them out first. But I've seen I think she might have posted it on a store here actually. You can see it on a computer screen there. She's composited them. Oh yeah. And then 
it reminds me of Photoshop and my process of like adding the shade, but she's doing that on canvas. So that makes me really happy because I'm like, this is just like real life shading. I know. But a lot harder because we can just erase quickly in Photoshop. Yeah, like how the heck, I mean, and you said it, oil paint, right? I think it's oil, I, I believe so. Oh um, my just God. Yeah, oil paintings, pop surrealism and creepy stuff. Wow. Oh, um, like that's, that's a total dream goal of mine. And look how real, it looks like a photo. Does, isn't it? Like just the, her techniques is just amazing. Oh my God, I want to buy a print from her. It's I know, so cool. same. <laughs> um, she does drop them. She does a few releases like every so often or okay, when she finds cool. a print in the background, she'll sell them on. And, but yeah, she's done a few. Oh my few God. Stuff and just like totally. I love her workspace away. as well. Love the way that she's just got everything oh. on the wall. It's just big splash. So, so cool. Sometimes yeah. I wish I was like a painter like that and made everything in real life from scratch and not on a computer. I'm like, that would be so cool to just be this like crazy artist doing all yeah. sorts of cool art and like have paint all over you all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of started painting my own self-portraits recently. That's what I kind of got into with the oils, but yeah, it's just a work in progress at the moment. I think I just want to show you this one here because they, she paints the background like a cut. It's usually yellow actually. And I just love that she yeah. builds from that. So she does each individual section. Wow. I wonder why she paints it all yellow like that first. Um, I'm not sure. I think she's, I think that's painted on, looks like board. MDF maybe or something. Oh, okay. So maybe so it's like maybe it's that's primer. the material. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and oh, there's another one you can see. But I know she does a lot of shows, a lot of exhibitions, and that's her again. Next to an amazing painting. Wow. So yeah, yeah I just love the way that she used the uses Photoshop to composite. It really inspired me when I was painting from my work because I just, yeah, just loved the idea that I've created something. It's got to a point, but there's still so much more you can like explore with it. And I think that's yeah. what painting is about. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Oh, there was pink, pink backdrop background there. So it almost looks like she's painting on wood. Yeah, I think it is actually. You can see the textures sometimes. In fact, I think most of them are. That's so cool. Cause that would be really hard cause wood has such a porous texture. Yeah, especially with oil as well. Yeah. Yeah, and even like her sketchbooks are so cool. Yeah, like these ones. They kind of remind me of tattoos. Yes, that's what uh, P uh, Kyle said in the chat. She needs yeah. to tattoos. I know. Oh, that would be God. amazing. I've no I've not had a tattoo before, but really? I think I probably would make an exception. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder if she would ever like let people get tattoo passes to give to yeah. an artist. I know I a I've seen a few illustrators do that where they yeah. just do a one-off payment just so that they can use any any of their work. Yeah. I love that. Wow. But I love that this, she's got the eyes going throughout. I think that's just such a nice like touch to each image. Yeah, oh my God. And the sunflowers. Oh, it's so good. It's like classic still life meets super creepy, surreal, yeah. fantasy art. Like it's amazing. It's just everything that I love about art in one. Totally. In Emma. <laughs> and especially with the like, the eeriness of it, but it's still so beautiful. Like it's just yeah. so pleasing. Like you couldn't, I wouldn't necessarily have a picture of intestines on my wall, but I would have this. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's what I was thinking too. Like normally kind of the eyeballs can... would freak me out a yeah. little, but it's just like so beautifully done that I wouldn't even mind. <laughs> oh, she sells stickers actually. Oh, cool. And they like holographic. Oh my God, she's so talented. And then I think this one 
Is that Wack she's yeah, so she made that on Wacom tablet. I think that was the video of it. Wow. And do you know her? No, no. I just swimming over a work all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so Emma, if you're out there ever watching this, then yeah, let's be friends because I love it. <laughs> Everyone tag her. With yeah. over her. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but the latest ones, I, I mean, you can see the progression of as well, like on her Instagram, but these latest ones, oh, like yeah. the colors. So, oh. so good. I think I probably got inspired with the yellow project with the sunflowers mm. from her work, probably. Oh my God. I wonder I love- if she has like a background in um, botanical illustrations because like her, all of her plants and mushrooms are like very accurate. Yes, yeah, really, so really accurate. Cool. And I love mushrooms and the this one, like my eye does not know oh, where to look first, it. but I love it. Yeah, that is so beautiful. So yeah. Ah. Well, I yeah, could go on forever. <laughs> I know, I know. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, today. that's all right. Like, really, really cool. Um, and don't forget if you want to submit yourself or uh, another artist that you would like to see here featured here on Adobe Live, click that little tab next to the chat on Behance um, and fill out the form for our artist spotlight. Love it. Okay, I'm not. I've just purposefully not clicked on it yet because I feel like I wanted to get our reaction together. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is this going to look like? Okay. Okay. Yes. I'm feeling yeah. like I need to just add a bit of brightness to the whole image first, just to because we've looked at such powerful colors with Emma's work. Yeah. I feel like I need to just like see what this is going to look like. So I'm going to add brighten it up a little bit sometimes as well when I'm editing an image I'll even if I've not finished the composite yet like we did with the blue project is I'll just whack it in Lightroom so that I know I'm on the right track um and so I'll put the preset on first and then I'll delete it all and start going and refining the edit Mm. but it's just so that I know where I'm going with the colors all together and yeah yeah that's smart I mean, it's probably more of a lengthy process, but they take me a long time anyway. So what's another hour? <laughs> I know exactly. It's like, once you're in it, you're in it. It doesn't really matter yeah. anymore. And it's funny actually, because I used to work very quick. I used to be quite an impatient editor. So when I was doing like the seven day portrait challenge that I mentioned yesterday, I would be editing an image each day of the week. In fact, I'll just go show you what I did for that. Um, so these ones some of them I'm not totally in love with totally proud of they're just stuff that or the images that I did each day Um, this was the latest one actually but if I zoom right down to the bottom oh that's cool so you can see the progression of my work in this which is why I quite like keeping this up That was one of the first ones that I did quite a few years ago now. I think it was probably 2014, 15. Um, wow. You can see there's not much color. Yeah, it's crazy to see how much your work has changed. Totally changed. But with these, again, like I was just going to say, I would edit them really quickly. So I can see a lot of mistakes in these because mm-hmm. they were edited, uploaded on the same day. Yep. I can see so apart from I think this is my absolute favorite one of the series um I love it but yeah when I'm now editing the color project I will take could take you know a week on and off editing it and I was never used to doing that I used to be really impatient and just try and edit it as quick as I could and oh I need to and but now I'm like no just take your time it's fine like you've got I think that's one of my downfalls was that I was just so impatient. Yeah. I think that probably was to do with trying to keep up with things and 
like social media and everything whereas now I'm just like no I need to really focus on my art uh, like just focus on it more Totally. I understand that completely. I think it's just, it's really hard to not feel like you have to bust things out quickly. And you think of like with social media, it's like they, social media wants you to just constantly be posting something and constantly putting stuff out there. And so it's hard to kind of sit down and spend a lot of time working on a really powerful project because the whole time in the back of your mind, you're you're like, well, I'm wasting time. I should. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you think yeah, you think of the incredible artists of the past and of our time and like whether it's um painting or digital art or even movies, like those some sometimes those pieces can take years to produce. Yes. Yeah. Like Avatar, that was like 10 years, was it? Yeah. Like in the and I'm like, why am I spending two hours on an edit when I need I can just spend all the time in the world? I've got all the time. I don't need to be mm-hmm. so um exactly so, yeah just so quick with it but with this project like I was just gonna say I actually had this 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 outfit for the yellow project was made probably about five or six years ago which which is why I wanted to create with it again um so doing that project at the time I think this took me about probably about a week to make the outfit so I stored it away for all that time and then when it came to this color project I was like I need to use that again so that's why I kind of went into it which is quite nice because then it's bringing in like the old work that I used to do to now again it's just a progression yeah yeah it's so cool to see how much it's changed I mean this one I'm not too impressed with <laughs> <laughs> I know I have a lot yeah I posted it on my Instagram like yeah, I posted it on my Instagram and everyone was like, this is giving me, is it trypophobia? Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah, totally. But this image is, I think when I did it, it was like literally just, so this is only like two years ago now. Um, but that's when I started working with like flowers. This kind of looks a bit like Emma Black's work, kind of. Maybe I got inspired by her. Yeah. With the flowers. Um, but yeah, that's probably one of my favorites actually. But yeah, so it's changed a lot since then. Yeah. It's really, really cool to see how much your work has changed. And like, I mean, now it's just so much more powerful. Obviously the colors really help a lot. Um, but also just kind of where you're bringing your art from you can see that this is like a personal mission versus just like a random idea that maybe came up like yeah it has it has so much more meaning behind it and clearly something that you're trying to express and i think yes that's uh the beauty of it all and what what shows now i think that's definitely a good good description of it and in a nutshell that's where i wanted to go i was i was feeling a bit on it on unauthentic about my work for a while I was like this yeah. is just too too quick too rapid like why do I need to be doing that so when I got the studio I was like I've got the studio to spend as much time as I want to creating these sets and it's just me it's just I feel like I'm just on another level now with my work yeah I totally I feel agree. so anyway yeah I I think so as well like it's really clear to see that and and when you feel that then that shows in your work like they've always said definitely they have always said like (laughs) right like they're they're people always say um when you're not in love with what you're doing and you're not feeling it anymore then that shows in your work and when you're like yes this is it like I'm so proud of this then that shows as well yeah I think it's hard as well because as artists we're very self-critical we all are um and this work this body of work was where I've just been the most confident and like you say it's it's shone through um absolutely so I'm not really sure how much time we've got left is it 
we only have a couple minutes left, like five minutes. Um, okay. So I don't know if you have any last things that you want to touch on um, and uh, anyone in the chat, if you have any questions for Holly before we wrap things up here. Yeah, let's, I can answer some questions. Let's go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I have obviously filmed all of these, like I said earlier, so my YouTube, I'm going to be uploading a lot more of the next few months. Um, I've uploaded obviously all the green project and the yellow project, they're already on there. So if you do want to see behind the scenes of those, then they're on there. Cool. Yeah. So where do you, what direction do you think you're going to go in this? Is it pretty much done? You're just going to do the color grading and find I think I'm going to probably go away and really think about how I'm going to make this more impactful because at the moment I'm feeling like it's just there's not enough explosion going off yeah for me I feel like we need some more depth here I'm not sure about the arms still but I think I, I do know, need to I go still, away and <laughs> I I like them I don't know I really like that I wonder if you bring them closer or something Oh yeah. Let's see. I'll have to fix all the Yeah. Like maybe yeah. even some of them end up like covering you or something. But then I mean then maybe it gives a different look because it looks like your arms are wrapping. And coming through. through, yeah. Yeah, like that. Although now. I quite like that. I know. Now that's cool because that's like you're putting your arm through the letters. That's cool. Yes. I'm going to have to investigate that. Let me just move that down a little bit. And it probably would need to be a little bit smaller. Oh no, actually, because it's probably the same size. Let's just move the right arm. Oh, that's so different now. <laughs> I know. I like that. I quite like that. I actually like that better, I think. Ooh, ooh, and then kind of like up over your head. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, this <laughs> over here. I know. <laughs> yeah, Sam said I like that composition. Like it was yeah, like, I feel like it's like I know I kind of like it because the hand coming through on the bottom makes sense. And then the hand up top doesn't because like you couldn't really it's turn your arm that other way. way. But so we're doing like, that. <laughs> yeah. I, I get, yeah. <laughs> I feel like a Spanish dancer. I love it. I don't know. You might have to switch us up and go in that direction. But here's a perfect example yes. of why it's so good that you didn't like take the time to do all those details because you get to this point in your in your image and yes. you're like, no, I don't like the size of that or the placement. And you have to move everything around. I yes. I just had that same thing happen with a piece I was working on where I had to drastically change the, sh the size of everything and the way I had masked it I was like ah oh, man oh, you can't yeah yeah I've had that a few times and you're like oh I'm gonna have to redo it all <laughs> I know or like you've warped things into place and have already like applied the layer mask and then you've yeah. changed the size and then cropped it you're like no I have to start over <laughs> oh, yes. yeah it's just so yeah I feel like I'm gonna have to because the colors are on there and all the uh, ah. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a long edit eventually yeah. when I because if I put that back there where was that like around here somewhere. yeah no I totally like it closer now or even like down here maybe oh no that needs to go So this then, is going to be quite a long edit there because I feel yeah, like it's a lot of to, masking. Yeah, you. it almost would be better to just like fully cut the arm out and rebuild your shadows rather than yes, even trying I probably, to keep Yes, because yeah, that is going to be impossible. Yeah. But it's nice because I've got a really clean arm there. There's nothing nothing in, in the way. So it's I could just, yeah. Yeah, it out. should be a pretty easy cutout. You might even be able to do select subject on it on the. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I probably will end up doing that. 
Yeah. And then that one I'll need to brighten up a little bit. Let's just see what this looks like. So actually I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to add a layer mask, a uh, clipping layer. Yeah, Kyle said, I do think that making the shade of your top match the shade of the letters will help Is, everything come together. Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So if I, yeah. And you know, you could, now that you did all the work on the letters coming out the sides, you could make this a four by five for Instagram. Yes. Bringing the arms in. And then maybe you make the letters kind of come towards the corners towards, and have that, yeah. like, that zoom effect. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, awesome. Oh, well, I love, I love it. how this turned out. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, Holly. This was so much Thank fun. You. Thank you Loved for it. all. Yeah. Thank you everyone for watching. This has been so much fun. Um, be sure to tune into the latest set of illustrator challenges with Andrew Hawk Rattle right after the stream and following the challenge, join the second day of designing icon sets with Courtney Sunner at noon Pacific time. Hope you all have a great rest of your day and take care. Bye everyone. See you soon. Bye.